Today we are going to be solving equations with rational exponents. This is Teek's Algebra 2, 7, 8. So what is a rational exponent? It's basically a fraction that's in your exponent. So we're going to call this a rational exponent. So how are we going to solve this? So first, whatever is in parentheses or whatever has that rational exponent, we want to get that by itself. And then after we get that by itself, we can basically eliminate this by multiplying it by the reciprocal of this rational exponent. But if you multiply this exponent by the reciprocal, you must also multiply this exponent by the reciprocal. So let's go ahead and start with this problem. So already it's isolated. Whatever is being raised to the one half power is already by itself. So again, to eliminate a one half power, we can multiply it by two over one. But if I multiply that exponent by 2 over 1, I must also multiply this exponent. I end up with x plus 30 equals, this becomes x squared. So now that I see I have an x squared, I see that I have a quadratic, I'm going to move everything to one side and see if it's factorable. I'm going to move it by subtracting x and subtracting 30. So now that I have my quadratic, I'm going to factor my quadratic. So luckily, a is 1. So in, if a is 1, I need to look for two numbers that multiply to 30 but add to negative 1. So two numbers, multiply to negative 30, add to negative 1. That's going to be a 6 and a 5. Now because they add to a negative 1, that means the negative number is bigger. And now take each factor and set it equal to 0. So x minus 6 equals 0 and x plus 5 equals 0. You're going to go ahead and solve for x. We're going to add 6 to both sides. And we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. And we get x equals negative 5. Now here's the dilemma, though. The, we actually can only have one solution. So think about that 1 half power. This is like the square root of this side. Remember, the square root is only going to equal the positive solution. So this problem, even though we worked it out, Okay, it only has x equals 6 because the negative 5 is extraneous. Okay, so make sure you understand that the square root can only equal the positive solution. So this was only going to be a positive number right here. So let's go ahead and try again. Remember, we need to isolate whatever is being raised to that rational exponent. So I want to get that by itself first. So first I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And now that I have isolated it, now I can multiply that exponent by the reciprocal. But if I multiply it on one side, I must multiply it on the other. I now have negative 3 to the third power, which is negative 27. Okay? Divide both sides by 3, and our final answer is x equals negative 9. Okay? Let's try example number 3 together. Okay? So... It's already by itself, luckily. So see, I already have the 1 half power by itself. So I'm going to multiply this side by 2 over 1. Again, the reason I multiply this side by 2 over 1 is because I want this to be eliminated. But if I multiply one side, I must multiply the other. I now have x plus 6 equals x squared. So back to a quadratic. Go ahead and move everything to one side. Now, because it's a quadratic, you have two solutions. You're going to factor this out. So x and then multiplies to negative 6, but adds to 1, 3, and 2. And the 3 has to be negative. Now you're going to take each one of these factors and set it equal to 0. And after you set it equal to 0, go ahead and solve. We're going to add 3 to both sides. And on the second one, we are going to subtract 2 from both sides. And again, we see that we have two solutions, but the square root can only equal a positive value. Therefore, the only true solution is x equals 3, and the x equals negative 2 is extraneous. Okay. Let's go ahead and solve this. Now, notice we don't have x on both sides, which is good. We're not going to have any extraneous solutions here. Remember, rule number one is to isolate whatever is being raised to that rational exponent. So in this case, we are going to divide by 2 on both sides. Okay. Next, we want to get rid of that third 3 fourths power. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 4 thirds. 
So x plus 2 equals. Whoa, that's a doozy. Let's think about that. What does that mean without a calculator? That means we are taking the cube root of 8 and we are raising it to the fourth power. So this is going to be 2 to the fourth power, which is going to be a 16. So x plus 2 equals 16. Now to solve for x, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides, and we're going to get x equals to 14. Okay? We'll try another one. Our whole goal is to isolate whatever is raised to that 1 half power. Be very careful here. Because there's no parentheses, that 4 is not raised to the 1 half power. So even though you don't see it, it's like that x is in parentheses. So first sub start by subtracting 3 from both sides, and you get 4x to the 1 half is equal to 16. Remember, that 4 is not attached to the 1 half, so we're going to divide by 4 and we get x to the 1 half is equal to 4. So now how do I get rid of that 1 half? I multiply the exponent by 2 over 1, or basically square the exponent, and I got x equals to 16, okay? Now the last example I'm going to do with you, same concept here, same exact concept. Notice that that x doesn't, that three x doesn't have parentheses. So the only thing raised to that 1 third power is the x. So we're going to start off by adding 2 to both sides. Next, we're going to divide by 3 on both sides, and I get x to the 1 third is equal to 3. Well, how do I get rid of that 1 third power? I'm going to basically cube both exponents. So 3 to the third power is 27. Okay, so now I want you to go ahead and we have an example there. I want you to pause this video and go ahead and practice question number one on your own. Okay, check how you did. First, we had to subtract the five from both sides. In order to get rid of this rational fraction, I, mult I basically squared it. I multiplied by two over one, which is the same as squaring it. And I had x plus one equals nine, and I subtracted one from both sides. Couple more practice questions here. Go ahead and pause this video and try number two and number three on your own. So actually we had done practice number two earlier in this video and so hopefully you got this one correct that it was x equals 14. So now practice number three is your real trial. So we added three right here to both sides. That way we could isolate these parentheses by itself. And then we had to square both sides to get rid of this rational fractions. And we got 4x equals 100. Divide both sides by 4, and we got x equals 25. Okay, our last practice question of today. Go ahead and pause this video and try this problem on your own. Okay, I know this one probably tricked you, and you probably only found the positive solution. And it's been a little bit, like, Hey, Ms. Taylor, you said that the square root can only equal a positive number. Well, when we're just looking at a square root, that square root is going to, if I looked at the graph of a square root, it's going to be a positive solution, okay? But I wasn't looking at the graph of a square root, okay? I was looking at a graph of a two-thirds. So I know it's a little bit tricky, but this graph is a really, really funky graph, okay? Again, it's not a square root graph. This graph actually would have made a shape, if I'd graph the left side, it would look like this. And if I graph the 126, it actually would intersect twice. So I know this one's a little bit harder to understand, but hopefully at least you got some practice with finding square roots and cube roots and how to get rid of that rational um, um, exponent. So hopefully this video helped you and have a great day.